Hello again, everybody. I know it's been a while, but I'm back with another tutorial, one that's been requested for quite some time, getting going on large drilling ships. As per usual when building any large ship, start off by saying you want to build a new station so that you don't have to worry about it floating around while you're trying to weld it. Then build a grid of however many drills you want. I'm going to be making a 25 drill rig because that's the limitation on drills on the server I usually play on. Your server may vary, and this design is easily scaled up as I'll show you toward the end of the video. Large drills make for easy building. Not only do they have large cargo storage capabilities, but they have cargo doors on every side except the side with the drill bit, so it's easy to network them together to get to your cargo bays later. They're also a heck of a lot stronger than small drill heads, which is why I recommend moving up to a large drill ship as soon as possible. I've never had a drill head explode on this design, unlike my small one. The next step is to add five small reactors, and add them in such a way that their cargo doors connect to the drills, and the cargo doors that don't connect to the drills point outward from the center of the ship. This will let you easily load uranium into them to start the reactors, since you can't just rely on conveyors to feed the reactors when there's no power anymore. The central column of this design is going to be a spine made up of small cargo bays for reasons that will become apparent later. Build a whole bunch of cargo bays down the very center, and we'll be using it to attach things later. Oh yeah, and you might as well stick on a cockpit. That's kind of important. I prefer to use the closed cockpit as it affords more protection from jerk-offs with assault rifles. Naturally, you're also going to need an ore detector, and while it technically doesn't really matter where you put it or which way you face it, I like to put it towards the front, because that way its radius of detection extends as far forward of my cockpit as possible. Okay, with that unpleasantness out of the way, we can return to building our cargo base spine. And you may be wondering, why are you using small cargo bays instead of large cargo bays? Well, it will become more apparent as the design unfolds, but first and foremost, I always use small cargo bays wherever possible, because the state of the game right now affords much better volume efficiency to small cargo bays than large cargo bays. Small cargo bays actually hold about three times more cargo per block than large cargo bays do. You can fit 27 small cargo bays in the same space of one large cargo bay, and you can also fit small cargo bays in nooks and crannies and fit them in in odd ways much easier. Here's where we put our lateral thrusters, four in every direction. Make sure you do them exactly like this. You want as much space as possible between the thruster's tip and the opposite edge of the cross-section of the vehicle. And also make sure you place the opposing pairs like so, so that the gyros can be safely built on the spine later. Next up, 16 gyros attached to the cargo base spine in the sections between the lateral thrusters. Why so many, you ask? More gyros is always better. Increased stability and maneuverability, not to mention mass, is always good for a drill ship to have. You might be able to get by with less, but more is always better. It really helps too if you get attacked, and that way you'll be able to keep your drills pointed towards your enemy much more easily. Next up, build some more cargo bays here, leaving the empty space columns at the diagonals of the top right and bottom left open still. That's going to be the channel through which your retro thrusters thrust. And here are those retro thrusters I was talking about. You only really need two of them for bare maneuverability purposes. It's rare you're going to have to worry about moving backwards in this miner. You're going to be moving forwards at all times, and if you need to stop from high speed, just swing it around and use your main thrusters to bring yourself to a halt. Now build an end cap of small cargo bays in a 3x3 grid extended however far you care to, depending on how much ore you think your miner is going to need to carry. I'm only going to do one layer, and generally that's sufficient for or one or two trips through a large asteroid before coming home. If you plan to zigzag your way through an asteroid several times before you come home to refine, you'll need to put more cargo bays here. Instead, I usually opt to put a med bay here because I play on a very hardcore PvP server and there's no juicier target than a big fat miner half stuck into an asteroid. Make sure you leave an extra block of empty space above the med bay or else it'll kill you when you try to respawn there. 
Once your cargo end cap is done, tack a large thruster onto the back of it and then put three small thrusters just below that so that you've got as much oomph as possible pushing forward. There's no room for a gravity drive on this thing, so you're going to need as much forward push as you can if it's going to remain viable for getting away from pirates. And really, slow acceleration is no fun for anybody. That's all the necessary guts for the miner, but you still need to put some protection on the outside to keep it from bashing itself to death on tunnel walls. So much like the small miner had a skirt around the edge of the drills, so here we will build a heavy armor frame that will absorb the shocks from the shaking of the drill ship as it tunnels its way through an asteroid. The step order of this construction was not arbitrary. I laid them out in the sequence that is most easily replicated when building in survival mode. So as long as you do the steps in order, it should be fairly easy to build this ship in survival mode, especially if you've already built the Bob Constructor ship that I showed you in Tutorial 6. The core principles of this design is that it maximizes economy of space, keeps the lateral thrusters as far from the tunnel wall as possible to avoid them from exploding from their own backblast, and does as much as possible in only a 5x5 cross-section to accommodate the 25 drill per ship limit imposed by the server I play on. If you want, you can fill in the gaps in the sides here with more heavy armor, excluding, of course, where the thrusters need to thrust out. But unless you're taking constant fire during your mining runs, I really don't see the need for it. What you will need, though, definitely, is a connector. It doesn't matter where you put it, so long as you attach it to a cargo bay. If you followed these instructions, everything should be connected to everything else. Just make sure it doesn't extend out from the armor. You don't want it getting sheared off on a mining run. There's only two small details left to take care of, the first being that you need to convert it from a station to a ship, and the second is putting all your drills in a group for easy hotbar configuration. On your hotbar, you'll need to both put on the drills as a weapon and the ability to toggle on and off the group. You can't right-click drill as a group. You have to use the weapon setting for that. And of course, you'll want the group of drills on there so you can turn them on and leave them on. I also like to be able to toggle on and off the cargo connector from the hotbar because it makes it easier to undock from the station without having to wrestle against the magnetics. If your server changes policy or doesn't have the 25 drill limit like mine does to begin with, it's easy to expand the drilling capabilities of this vessel. All you need to do is add more drills. The large drill block is excellently designed. It can hold quite a bit of ore all on its own, and as I said before, the configuration of the cargo doors makes it very easy to network them together. My favorite sweet spot for drills is a 7x7 grid of 49 drill heads. It does the trick, drills big holes, and is still quickly and easily built and replaced if it gets blowed up. The rest of this video is entirely optional. It deals with concepts of drilling that many of you may already be familiar with if you watched my advanced drilling tutorial, and also goes into specifics on the vagaries of drilling on an online dedicated server. Simply fly your drill ship to an asteroid and find a likely looking spot where the ore detector picks up the kind of minerals that you want to prioritize. Here I'm going after magnesium because I want to make more ammunition. Unless you have a particular need to collect it, you can go ahead and use the drill as a weapon and right click to clear off the top layer of stone. Then once the stone is cleared away, simply toggle on the drills as a group and start thrusting forward gently. Try to keep it under a meter per second moving forward, or you might accidentally bash your drills to death due to server lag. I generally find the easiest way to maintain this speed is to tap W at the same pattern of a traffic blinker. On, off. On, off. On, off. Once you've threaded your front end into the tunnel, don't even bother with the lateral or up-down controls. You probably won't even have to adjust your heading with the mouse. Just hold down Alt and move the camera around to keep an eye on all sections of yourself and to keep an eye out for pirates as you push your way into the asteroid. And keep tapping forward with your thrusters to keep moving forward at about one meter per second. If you see someone log in, stop thrusting immediately for about 10 seconds. Currently, when someone logs on to a server, the server gets bogged down by sending him the map and and calculating all other kinds of crap I have no idea about, and basically everybody already on the server temporarily loses connection for 5 to 10 seconds. This means your drills will no longer actually drill, even if they're on. The asteroid won't shrink away from the front of the ship, which means if you keep moving forward, you're just bashing your drills against the asteroid over and over and over again. And I shouldn't have to tell you that's not good. 
he'll probably hit empty pockets at some point, or intersect other people's tunnels that have already been drilled. It's no big deal, just keep it moving forward one meter per second, because chances are your drills are still channeling through something. Notice that the heavy armor frame is starting to deform. Don't panic, that's supposed to happen. Heavy armor deforms a whole lot before it breaks. By the time you're done on your mining trip, those heavy armor blocks may look like heavy armor noodles, but they'll still pop right back into shape with a welder, probably not even needing any steel plates, and they absorb all the impacts that would otherwise damage or destroy the delicate internal systems of your drill ship. When you start to notice that you're picking up more stone than anything else, it means you're probably about to exit the asteroid. Turn your drill group back off, and then start right clicking your drill weapon to dig faster out of the asteroid, unless you just absolutely need that last little bit of iron. Though trust me, you'll probably be drowning in iron by this point. Try to move your camera around to the front end of your ship, and then keep right-click drilling your way out of the asteroid until none of those little gray clouds poof up in front of your drills. Because of the nature of online play, you might be hitting something that you don't even see. So better safe than sorry. Keep drilling until there are no poofs, but also be careful that you don't change the attitude of the drill until you are completely outside of the asteroid. It would be very easy to turn prematurely and break off large chunks of shit ship like a pencil still half inside the tunnel. Once you have completely exited the asteroid, you've got a choice. You can either go home or you can turn around and find another spot to drill a tunnel through the asteroid. You've got the cargo capacity to do it, but if you're playing on a PvP server like me, it's probably a good idea to just take what you've got and get home. One trip in the hand is worth two in the bush, or I guess that means one rock in your cargo hold is worth two in the asteroid. Just make sure when you leave the asteroid you don't initially travel in the direction of your base. Fly out in a random direction for a little while, then stop and look and see if somebody followed you. If you're in the clear, then head home. Alright folks, that's all I got for this time. If you want me to make a tutorial about something else in particular, or there's a certain game you want to see me play, just sound off in the comments and I'll consider it. See you guys next time.